down to Stockbridge. Um, so you know, he's been as good as gold, really. You've just got to take the time with him, give him a little bit of time to know what's happening. But we've just parked up, had a coffee, and he stood there quietly. Coming back about at these cars. It's very quiet today, considering it's Friday. Um, just after Christmas, you know. So, come on, baby. Up you go. So he's on a slack rein, as you can see. We're not holding his head or pulling him about or anything. And he's seeing so many new things, you know, like... Lots of stuff going on, car doors banging, overtaking him, electric cars that come past and, you know, make no noise. So, yeah, he's doing really well. And he's happy doing it, he seems to enjoy it, you know, which is the most important thing of all. If you can get him to enjoy what you ask him to do, obviously, that's got to be the best of anything, really. And he definitely seems happy doing, yeah. Come on, baby, up you go. Come on, babe. When I just asked him now. Right, truck, babe, truck. As you can see, you know, he's that little fella, he's doing his job. He's just done like seven miles down here, but he's just, you know, we stopped for 20 minutes, I suppose, if that. Certainly no more than 20, and he's, you know, up and ready to go. Um, and he's kept his condition nice, he's all muscle now, as opposed to, not that he carried a great deal of fat anyway, but. Um, He's definitely muscle, you see his quarters dividing all the muscles and his irons, you can see. So, yeah, very happy with him weight-wise. He lost a bit, obviously, a little bit of stress in travelling, etc. New place, settling down. Um, but he's put it back on, although he doesn't um, necessarily look as big as he did. Um, He's all there, he's all muscle, he's well covered. And obviously muscle's heavier than, than fat, so he's levelled out. He's a little bit heavier than what he was actually now, I think, by a few kilos, 12 kilos, I think. Not on all 12 kilos, not a lot to measure, you know, I mean, obviously. But he'll, he'll get... Uh, Just getting better and better all the time. You see that great big truck come past, We're taking it out. It's real nice, you know. It's a nice, nice horse. Come over, babe. We're on this dual carriageway now. I know probably you'll never do that, but the point is, we're doing it for two reasons. One, I was out with some horses one day, and they've been in. Uh, a fire, I think, at a house, and they diverted the traffic. Well, I couldn't turn round. Um, it just wasn't the room to do so. So, and we've got cars coming up the inside and the outside of him, like this here now. And well, that's a big test for us, you know, vans like this, etc. Um, and cars coming up the inside. Oh, she's got to be happy doing the job, you know, he's not really, not panicking um, or worrying. He's got them outside and inside. It's lovely, and they're coming up underneath this big flyover, going under the 303. We had to stop coming up here for a while because the, uh, they, all the centre reservation was grown right over. So it was dangerous, you know, like too dangerous to do because no one could see you. Hey, psh, psh, psh. good boy.
not a youngster, he's not, he's not like a normal three, four year old we have in the break, you know. Um, we break them at all ages, it doesn't matter, but he's an older horse, this one. But purebred Arab. The trouble is with these Arabs, the way, not, no, there's no trouble with them at all, they're lovely. But trouble is with them, their endurance is beyond belief. So you've got to adjust that, you've got to think about it a little bit more than you would with a cob necessarily, you know, or a cold-blooded horse. Because they just keep going. Yeah? So what you've got to remember is however far away from home you go, you've got to come back, haven't you? So you just got to look at that and have a look at how they're breathing, etc. That type of thing. Um, very athletic. And this particular horse, more so than most, I would have said. Lovely horse. Very, very powerful horse for his size. You know, I mean, extremely powerful. Very strong. So he's already done seven miles. And he's going to do seven miles going back, or as near as damn it. So this trip will be a 14 mile round trip. We've got a pop pop motor bike coming up behind if you can hear it. So he's not bothered. And he's just a genuine nice horse. As long as he knows what you want, he'll do his very, very best to please you. As long as he knows what you want, you know, he knows, understands what you're asking him to do. But I like him a lot. I broke uh, a team of six, or I broke six to make a team of four, like two spares. And uh, it was a long time ago now, many years ago, and they went back to, uh, I don't know, somewhere out there in, you know, Saudi Arabia or somewhere, believe it or not. And there was all she spread over here. Um, and, um, I think they was bred over here, certainly in Europe anyway. And uh, yeah, they went back. All matching, all bays with four white feet. Go on, mate. Good boy. But just a nice, easy going horse. You know, some of them would spook at that orange mirror there. You don't see many of them along the road. When you come the other way, obviously you're looking at the, the mirror itself. When you come up behind and you see that orange, they would. Um, you know, spook at it, look at it. But bits along the side of the road, um, bits of rubbish people throw out, unfortunately. You know, take a bit of notice of. He did, he obviously did when we started, but he's not very easy going now. But he's got the staying power. You know, he really has. And his head's up all the time. He doesn't get tired like, um, like I say, oh, very athletic, you know, very fit, actually. He's not finished yet, he's got to do his other bits and pieces, but, uh, and the nice thing about him, like all Arabs, he lifts his tail up in the air, if you put the rein on it, like that, he puts it down for you, look, and if you get it underneath, the rein underneath, he don't mind, you know, he's got used to you pulling it out free, he don't clamp hold of it, is what I mean, he did to start with again, but he don't do that now. Yeah, real, real nice. I don't know how tall he is. I've never sticked him, uh, never measured him, you know. Come on, baby, good boy. Um, but he's quite tall, you know. He'll be 15 hand, I suppose, I don't know. Real nice little fella he is. Come on. Get up, babe. Trot on. Come on, babe, get up. Good boy. But he seems to really enjoy his work, which is the nicest thing in the world, you know what I mean? That he enjoys it. Go on, babe. Steady, babe. Steady. Steady.
one of the big old trucks and changing gear and you know as he's come past and you know up and down the gearbox and um, he don't care he's happy I mean he did do obviously when great big trucks come past but you know and I'm not saying I don't see them any different to any other horses I look at each horse as an individual the breed doesn't really make you know that much difference to me people say oh you can't Arabs you know oh my god well there's an Arab there he's not a baby you know he's not being broke as a youngster he's an older horse um, I'm not sure how old he is Teddy I'll have a look in his mouth when we get back and see but uh, he's just easy going you know as long as you treat him right but that, that applies to all horses not just because he's an Arab that's silly saying that all horses just got to be they're all different and some of them you can say come on don't be silly get on with it number one you've got to conjole a bit more number one you might start completely the other end of the job we got a film on some of the dvds we sell saying the end game really you don't really explain about the film much but what we do is put the horse more or less straight in harness and drive it yeah um, in a pair, but more or less straight in within a day or so of being here um, because that was the right thing to do because otherwise with that particular horse everything you've done was a worry so it was best to get all the worry out in the first time so what I mean is you put the bridle on you thought oh good good, good oh, that's it that's it we're finished now you know then you put this then you put that then you put something else on him and um, the consequence of that was that, uh, you know, you're just constantly worrying them all the time. So we put it all on, we put him in, we stood him in. It wasn't quite as simple as I'm saying. But, uh, that's what we've done. And um, he was just absolutely, you know, lovely. Then we taught him after that <laughs> everything, you know, that we need, we need to learn. But he needed that first because otherwise it was just a constant worry for him all the time. He was, you know, unnerved by anything you'd done around him. So we get the main thing, like the end game, if you like that, and then the other bits we could teach. So that was all we had a while ago, like that. Yeah, it's a, although it's a, although it's a coloured horse, it's very fine, um, fine boned horse, you know. I think, as far as I remember. Come, baby. Yeah, called the end game. It's a lot of DVD. Come on which just shows a completely different approach of doing all that's why you can't write books on it. I know people do, and I'm not condemning people that do, I just think they're all individuals, so you can't, you know, if, if you could produce them on a conveyor belt, well then, then there wouldn't be any need for any, everybody could do it, wouldn't they? But to get them up here and confident like that, with these splashing water, see them going through that paddle there, and that type of thing, you just got to get them, you know, happy doing their job. And confident, like he's confident, isn't he? Like he's, he's got to ditch that side with a lot of reflections in the gutter there. That side, he's got motors coming here, he's got a big old sign to cross over in a minute. Come on, baby boy, and you don't have to drive him on or anything like that. He's, uh, he's real sweet, real nice horse. But how you want them all to be, innit? You want them to be happy. You don't want the job to be like a, you know, you just want them to do it because they're happy to do it. Come on, mate, get on. Whoa, 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 whoa. Come on. Come on. So, that's, that's, um, he's only seen one of them before on the way down here, one the other side of the village. Um, so, you just got to say to him, steady, but like that. Bears no grudge, just what's this dad, you sure this is alright, that's what he's asking me, I've got to say to him, come on mate, you're alright, basically, just with the contact I have through my hands with him, through the reins, and just get him sitting sweet on the job, you know what I mean, but you see he's not upset by it is he, what's that, who painted that on the road, whatever that, you know, don't make any sense to him does it, at all. and it's very hard to replicate that, um, in the arena um, because you have to have uh, if, 
it's, it's, it's what you paint it on is the problem. All sorts of people have said to me, oh, what you want to do is this, what you want to do is that. Well, let me tell you, then when it, you're crossing over something, yeah, you want it to be, come on baby, good boy. You want it to be that they don't slip, don't you? I mean, obviously. But when you're doing manholes, they can slip on manholes. So you've got to pick the manholes that you get them to go over first. So that if they do get on one later on, it's a bit more polished, a bit more worn out, if you like. And they might slip a little bit. They, you've got the confidence in their cells to go, oh, I've well, just slipped, you know, they don't blame the actual manhole cover. Or, you know, a bit hard to explain, I understand. Uh, a bit hard to get over you what I mean. But basically, you've got to build their confidence slowly. So if the first manhole cover you went on, they slipped, you know, and, and nearly fell over, they're not going to want to go on another one, are they? And that was a lovely one there. You see them cages there that pick up the rubbish from people's houses. Um, that thing, that's really good. And this one is good. You see this here? I hope they never repair this wall because you can see that black polythene might just move in a minute. You can see it moving there a little tiny bit. But they put it over that wall to preserve it. And it's beautiful because it flaps them about and it's another thing for them to get used to. You say, well, why would you want to do that? So, well, if the lorry comes down with a lot of timber covered in black polythene as it overtakes you, um, you know, obviously, go and bake it up. You know, they're not going to be fried by shit, this big old lorry. It's like, it, you know, don't really, you know, bother him at all. Um, you know, he's perfectly controllable, perfectly happy. He's not finished his training yet. Um, you know, he's not finished his training, but, yeah. Lovely, lovely, lovely horse. He's really nice. I like him a lot. I like them all, really. They're all lovely. But he's been, look, he's not been a challenge to do at all. What he's been, I suppose, without being conceited uh, or appearing that way, you get a lot of experience over the years. So it pleases you a bit when all the bits you've, pieces you've learned, you can bring together for, you know, also this age. And like this is big lorry coming here, look, big old tanker. We go straight past, don't mind, you know what I mean? Happy. This fan thing here, and this camera thing. Come on, babe. Got some shooting going on to the left hand side, can hear guns going off. Um, funny, don't mind. You know, shotguns going on, I mean, they're shooting, you know, game. Yeah, he's a nice, nice fella. Nice little fella. Like him a lot, yeah. And the lady that owns him's a nice, nice lady and understands the horse, you know. Um, and what she said to me, the way he is, and like that. All of that's right, you know. Not always right, because everybody sees them differently. But always can have one silly thing happen in his life. Um, that upsets him and it'll stay with him you know he'll remember it so if you get uh, deja vu like it comes back in the same situation might upset him again but obviously no one knows that come on baby we don't know what happens in their little lives or the way they see things I'm still trying to learn now you know and try and understand them you know, more and more, I try all the time to understand and try and make them, you know, make them confident and happy in what they're doing and enjoy it and want to go out, want to have their harness on, want to go to work, you know, want to go out and see the world. And that, that's lovely, it's a nice rewarding thing to be able to do. Go on, my baby, on you go. So we're just doing now, we've, we've just started doing the arena. Now with another horse, before they ever come out on the road, we'd be doing all the arena with all the scary bits. And you think you would, you know, the way people talk about Arabs, you think that's what you'd do first. 
but this particular horse, he was better off coming up the road first, and that's where he wanted his confidence first. And even if they've been ridden before up the road, what you've got to understand is you put blinkers on them, you take 80% of their vision away. Well, I mean, why should they? Um, you know, it's, it's got a completely different world, you know, when you put blinkers on. Some of them are happy with blinkers. Some of them take a little bit of time to adjust. Some of them hide behind the blinkers and the world goes away, you know, and, and don't bother them at all. Other ones, they want to, you know, keep turning their head round to have a look. <laughs> but they're just different. But he's a nice horse. Run away. Hands up! Oh.